ROS2 is quickly becoming the leading platform for programming robot. It's time to go ROS2. In this video, I will show you how to migrate a launch file in XML format from ROS1 to ROS2. I'm assuming that you already have a ROS1 project that you want to migrate and that you've ported your nodes to ROS2. Now you want to port your launch file and you want to use the XML format in ROS2. Hello, I am Roberto from Deconstruct. In this video, I will show you how to migrate a launch file in XML format from ROS1 to ROS2. You will see how to include and how to locate files inside a launch file, how the node element changes in ROS2, how to use substitution in a launch file, how to use remapping and how to load parameters, and how to launch nodes inside a namespace. So, in order to start, Let's first open the code editor. In the meanwhile, I will show you the ROS1 launch file that we want to migrate. It's this one. So you can see it has a launch tag, uh, meaning a launch element at the beginning. Then we include our, a different launch file with a simulation. Uh, we start a node, in this case it's a static transform publisher. Then we start Arvis and we pass in a configuration file. After that we uh, load two parameters to the parameter server and we do a remapping of two um, topics. After that we uh, launch the obstacle avoidance node and finally we start the, um, a different node called Arvis Marker, just an Arvis Marker. Um, this is to show you how to launch a node inside a names namespace. All right, so our code editor window open. Let's add a new file here. Inside the launch file, we create a new file. It's here and we will call it um, project-launch.launch .launch, and we will give it the extension XML. All right, now let's paste our code from ROS1. All right, let's make this bigger. So in this case, we will do a file for ROS2 and the launch element remains exactly the same. There's no change here. So inside the launch um, tag, there's a new tag called include that you know from ROS1 where you can um, reuse a different launch file and the difference here uh, that you have to instead of using find use find package share so that's the only change you do for the include tag so after that we have a node element here we are launching the static transform publisher so in ROS2 this doesn't change much just that instead of type we have here each time we launch a node in ROS1 we have we define as type and we specify the executable and this time in this case in ROS2 we just write exec so it's a little bit clearer in the next line we are defining an argument with the name Arvis config and we're passing in a value and later on in the, uh, we are substituting uh, this value here for passing in the configuration file to our Arvis node. So in ROS2 this is uh, instead of using argument or arc we use let and here instead of arc we use var 
Of course, we have to change here. Instead, instead of using type, we use exec to um, to indicate which one is the executable uh, file. Next, in ROS1, we use the param element to load a parameter to the parameter server. So we're giving it a name and a value. In ROS2, we don't have a parameter server, um, at least not like in ROS1, and each parameter is always assigned to a specific node. So this is why we have to put the parameters inside the node that will be using those parameters. So just like in ROS1, we have a we can have a node tag which has a, a opening and an closing element. So just remember that parameters have to be nested elements inside of a node tag in ROS2. All right, then in our ROS1 file, original ROS1 file, we were doing some remaps here. And this means that all nodes that are executed after this remaps here in the launch file will have these topics remapped to what I'm pointing to here. In uh, ROS2, we have to, similar to what we do with parameters, we have to place the remaps always inside a node tag. So we could do this also in ROS1, but uh, it was optional. In ROS2, you have to do it always. So to finish here the uh, obstacle avoidance node, remember to change from type to exec. So our last node here, an Ervis marker that we are publishing, or an Ervis uh, node that is publishing an Ervis marker. Um, let's change this first. We see that it is inside a namespace in ROS1. This is how you put a node inside a namespace. We don't do it like this in ROS2, so we put this out. Um, instead, we create a group tag, an opening and a closing group tag. And we also have a, add a new tag, which is this in ROS2, which is called push ROS namespace and it has the attribute namespace and we give it a name just we will we'll use this and we close it this is how you put a node inside a namespace using a ROS2 XML launch file all right now let's um, compile this and see if it works. And we use um, call con build, symlink install, and we only want to compile this package, so we use package select my package. All right, so we source and let's run the launch file. We write ROS2 launch, then the package and the file. We use a uh, two times tap to auto complete. And let's see if it works. No, it doesn't. Um, it says uh, the launch file might have syntax error. Let's see. Um, here we are including, oh yes. Um, at the uh, one, we're including this file, simulation.launch.py. 
so in ROS1 we only had uh, .launch files. Um, this is a Python launch file. So we are missing here the extension. Let's save it and try it again. Let's see if it works. No, it doesn't. Um, let's see. What is here the error? It's saying package rv is not found. Uh, why is this? Okay, of course, in Rust 2 we're using um, rvs2. Not rvs, so we have to change this. Save it and try it again. All right, it's launching Gazebo. All right, the simulation. Let's see the graphical tools and Aris also. All right. So we successfully migrated a launch file from ROS1 to ROS2 using the XML launch format. So that's it for today. I hope you found this video useful. If you liked it, um, you can hit the thumbs up button and share it with other people. And you can also go to the website theconstruct.com where you will find uh, different courses on robotics and on ROS. So see you in the next video.